yeah hi everyone so today's topic is on clinical SAS projects so let's go one by one okay so here I got a comment from one of the viewer named as Shalaka More so she mentioned that ma'am I really appreciate your informative videos if your schedule allows could you consider creating a video on clinical SAS projects okay so to answer this question I have prepared this video so maybe you can go through it and hope you might like it so further the comment says topics like retrieving sample raw data and specifications as well as creating SGTM Adam and TLFs. Yes, I do have a plan of creating SGTM Adam and TLFs. So maybe from uh, today, I guess I've started something. So we'll see in the next slides as to what I have to present here. And next is comment says it would be a great help of freshers like me to build a portfolio portfolio i mean to say to build a strong portfolio okay so how do you build a strong portfolio is it only by education is it only by certification is it only by just getting enough training and reading materials the answer is no you build a strong portfolio provided uh, you have the basic eligibility of uh, becoming a SAS programmer and a biostatistician. I have mentioned um, and created various videos into SAS and statistics eligibility, then SAS and statistics career. So, and SAS and uh, statistical programmer uh, job description. So you can go through these videos. So these uh, might help uh, the new freshers to understand as to how to build a strong portfolio. So once you have uh, achieved the eligibility and the basic requirement of being a BSc statistics or an MSc statistics, uh, then uh, you can further go ahead and avail for the SAS certification. So again, I'm not here to promote any institute or any kind of uh, training institute as to you follow this. It depends on the viewer's choice as to what they would like to follow for getting the SAS certification. So once you get that SAS certification, you may attend some various seminars, workshops or attending, you know, question answer session. So even that might help you. And the next thing is um, if you have got a good opportunity to work with various companies by getting overall exposure in terms of working on life projects, like say, for example, you have an asthma uh, disease where there is no still um, cure or uh, medicine for that completely eradicates uh, this asthma disease from your body. So we still don't have a no medication on that so these clinical trials they are still ongoing and their medicines are still ongoing so in case if you get an opportunity to work on life projects like it could be diabetes or HIV or if you have got an exposure to work on COVID-19 uh, patients data so these kind of experiences helps you to build a very strong portfolio where your life data your experience counts a more because the moment you work on life projects the moment you work on life data you will come across various challenges you will various you will come across various risk you will come across various impacts uh, due to those risks in your studies as to how it affects like you know the the regulatory authority body's submission if you do not do your analysis on time so all these things experiences counts a lot and these experiences um, helps you to build a strong portfolio along with working on attending any seminars workshops then having good education background and having good um, certification with uh, minimum amount of requirement of the passing certificate so these things helps you to build a strong portfolio and since you are a fresher i mean to say 
it's a very long way maybe like four to five years uh, experience will go only in learning and once you have completed five to six years maybe if you have still interest in this kind of industry uh, you may you may gain more knowledge and that's how you can see yourself grow but trust me initial four to five years it's just going to be a learning experience and uh, even if you join an organization you don't get an opportunity to work on live data then please ensure that you speak to the right people and you speak ask for the right uh, amount of work you get uh, and speak up for your stand so that you know uh, you can build a strong portfolio so this is what my answer would be to all these um, uh, comments that I have received. So let's continue with this uh, clinical uh, SAS projects uh, video. Okay, so what is clinical? Now, this is something related to a direct observation and treatment of patients. The reason why I say direct observation is, uh, say for example, you have a hospital, right? Uh, what does it deal with? It deals with clinical. Why clinical? Because it deals with biology. And why it deals with biology? Because it deals with human kind of um, patients. So anything that relates to direct observation. So I have a patient in a hospital which is kept under observation. Okay, did you took your medicine today? And after taking medicine, what was its observation? And whether the treatment is doing uh, good or bad in that particular patient. So all these uh, things that are related is nothing but comes under the clinical. That is why um, uh, it's related to direct observation and treatment of patients. Now, what is SAS? Uh, I think everybody knows that statistical analysis system is a programming language software that analyzes data to produce statistical results based on various concepts of statistical test. So next is what is project? Now, say for example, in a very common layman's language um, since you are a fresher i would like to explain you say for example you want to make an aloo parotha right so your first step is to boil an aloo after that you will add that masala into that uh, boiled aloo then you will make a specific paste uh, or like you know a stuff into that after that you will take uh, the flour and then you will make a nice dough out of it and then uh, you will you will add that uh, aloo parotha stuff in that um, dough and you will roll it into a round shape chapati and then you will cook it on the tawa so project is nothing but a sequence or series of tasks or milestones that needs to be completed in order to attain its outcome in the form of results or information so if i want to make an aloo parotha i have to go a step by step process unless i boil the aloo i cannot add the masala unless i add the masala i cannot add it in the dough unless and until i add it in the dough i cannot roll it into a chapati unless i roll it into a chapati i cannot cook it on the tawa so in the similar way in a common layman's language project is nothing but a sequence of series of tasks that you have to go through to get the result results so say for example um, i have a sas project uh, unless and until i complete this milestone you cannot con go, go to the next milestone unless and until i complete the second milestone i cannot proceed with the third milestone i'll explain this in more detail in the uh, uh, next slides so clinical sas project is nothing but a project involving clinical trial treated patients data which is analyzed and interpreted through sas software very simple and a basic uh, definition which i have um, uh, put up here so that you know it becomes very easy to uh, understand and uh, so unless you understand the basic concepts only then you will understand the uh, next uh, process uh, out of like you know 
now you understand what is a project so now you'll understand what is the clinical sas project so say for example i have a non c disk project so here i have the raw data now who gives me the raw data the data management team the data management team will give you the raw data in the form of xpt files which you may uh, convert into sas data sets through a proxy port and uh, procedures and then uh, you may do the further analysis the reason why they give you an xpt files is so that uh, you there are no chances of anybody making any changes in those uh, sas data sets or the xpt files now xpt files in sas software they are nothing but something like you know zip file uh, say for example i have a microsoft excel i want to send it that to someone through email so through email there are might be changes that you can open the file and you can do some changes and you can save it right so in those situations to avoid those what we do is we zip that uh, microsoft excel file in a specific folder and then we send it in the same way and in the same pattern the sas software works is like you can export the raw data into an uh, xpt files and then the data management team will give to the programming team and then uh, we we unzip it through proxy port and we convert the xpt files to sas data sets and that's how we do the programming for generating this derived data sets now some organizations they follow uh, derived specifications so they they do have a specific um, procedure or specific format that they have to develop the derived specifications first and based on those uh, derived specifications once they have been finalized or reviewed by the team leader or a manager then it goes for the um, deriving your data sets by doing the programming now once that is done you start creating the uh, table listings and figures uh, from sas programs and then you uh, output those table listings and figures in the form of word documents or pdf files right so this is what the normal process is in the non cds process there's not too much of um, rules regulations boundaries that you need to follow but um, in terms of standardization of variable names labels format so you don't have to follow a specific pattern so you just have to uh, understand that your job is to derive data sets it's not necessary that uh, you have to follow this particular pattern or any guideline or anything you can just uh, derive it based on your minimum requirement and uh, you can easily create table and listings and figures so this saves a lot of time and this is the normal process of uh, that we follow in the non cdisk project now what happens in the cdisk project now cds project they have a series of task um, that uh, that needs to be followed one by one to uh, to achieve its milestone and then uh, to reach its um, specific outcome or the results of the information right so my starting point is my raw data which i have explained in the earlier slide the next thing is based on this raw data you will start developing your sdtm specifications now once you have uh, the first draft version ready that's quite sufficient enough to start developing your um, adam specifications the moment you have the first draft version uh, ready uh, then based on these specifications uh, you can start uh, generating uh, your sdtm data sets by writing your sas programs based on these specifications that you have written so you have to follow this uh, guideline and based on these uh, specifications you have to write your programs in such a way that these data sets are generated same way uh, you have to follow the adam specifications 
uh, in order to generate these ADAM data sets. Now, once these two data sets are generated, I mean to say the first draft version, you can you, uh, you can add it into the Pinnacle 21 software, uh, which validates these two data sets as per your CDISC guidelines, whether they have followed it or not. And in case if they have not followed your CDISC guidelines, the Pinnacle 21 software will give you some issues, warnings and um, errors. So you have to fix those um, issues one by one. And once you have cleaned warnings, once you have your cleaned uh, errors, uh, issues is fine. Uh, issues somewhat uh, can be justified uh, to regulatory bodies, but there should not be any errors or warnings uh, into your Pinnacle 21 report. So once that is cleaned, this particular process, it keeps going on like a loop. Right now, once these SGTM data sets and Adam data sets they are cleaned in the Pinnacle 21 software, you can start creating your table listings and figures. Even though if these two data sets are not cleaned, if you want, you can go ahead and draft your first version. But then again, like you know, it would be some kind of again loop that you have to follow all these steps again and again. Okay, just like a loop once you create so. It's a very daunting and a very tedious kind of a job, which I would like to say when you work on a CDISC project, but that's how the standardization is being done across the world so that all the CRO and pharma companies, they follow these guidelines while submitting their uh, medicinal report to regulatory uh, authority bodies for getting the approval of their medicines and uh, so that they can uh, market their uh, medicines in the market so so that they get their license for the medicines and they can market in the uh, market so after creating this table listings and figures you can generate this defined.xml now defined.xml can be generated in two ways one is through sas programming the and the another way is through pinnacle 21 um, enterprise software now enterprise software is very um, I think it's an advanced uh, step uh, as compared to the Pinnacle 21 community software, community version. So what happens is in the enterprise version, uh, you can add these SGTM, Adam data sets or TLFs and you can add all those information. So these defined on XML will get uh, generated automatically. So that's how features are being provided in most of the softwares that we work in our industry and CDISC is a non-profit organization uh, where it is doing a lot of work in terms of um, creating a standardization for process so that everybody follows the same rules same regulations and same uh, guidelines in all their clinical trials so this is the specifications for the data data set um, if we are using the non CDISC uh, kind of a project or if we are handling the non CDISC kind of a data. So you can specify uh, the data set name as per D underscore or data underscore whichever you feel comfortable. So here I have taken this population data set as an example. So where you will see the order then the variable names, then the labels. If you see, these are all, I mean to say, uh, somewhat similar to your CD standards so that, you know, you get quite familiar in terms of implementing that. Then whether they are type is text or integer or floating, then the length, when whether the rule is predecessor pre or derived or uh, assigned, then you can specify the derivation like say for example if i'm calculating the age and it's not from the crf uh, captured age so in that situation i will write its formula here right so these are what are the kind of um, templates that you will see in most of the organizations somewhat similar to here and there 
but uh, this is what you would like to uh, follow about it so i'll take this in more detail uh, one to one in example uh, to explain as to how do you uh, assign uh, a specific um, variable as derived uh, in uh, specifications and when do you when do you assign a specific variable or when a specific variable falls under the pre de sir sir right so we will go through all these uh, in detail one by one so but this is just an example as to how the derived specifications that it would look like in most of the organizations and um, that's what uh, i just wanted to explain uh about this yeah so thank you guys for watching so hi uh i would like to explain here uh, the sdtm specifications that it would look like so say uh you can keep all those variables which you would like to keep and um, in the domain section you can select whatever domains uh, that you would um like to keep like say concomitant medication or demographic so here i have uh, say if i select the comments so i will be able to see only the comments domains uh, with their order then their variable names their variable labels their core whether it's required or whether it's um, the other options then you'll have this type kind of whether it's in teacher or text then specifying the length like say for example if the study id the length is around say uh, 50 so uh, that color coding will go so this is having a conditional color coding so format is again whatever format that you would like to apply for the uh, numeric parameters or for the character parameters then in the control terminologies uh, you can keep whichever uh, domains uh, that you have been selected the code list then the origin whether it has been um, derived or it has been assigned so say for example unique subject id it's the combination of study id subject id and the site id so this would be my say derived right so you can keep uh, all these options here and whatever the method you can specify here you can also specify here the derivation like say it's the combination of uh, study id subject id and your site id right so these things uh, you can perform and say for example if i select the dd which is my death so again things keep changing right so you will see the death details whether when that patient uh, died uh, the date time the uh, the date test so here the date uh, the start date when that patient died those dates are not there so you can click on this option and you can activate those uh, variables which you need yeah so this is how you prepare this um, sdtm uh, specs so this is just a small example that i just explained that in most of the organizations you will see similar type of um, sdtm specs template where you know most of the things you need to work around like this then you have to mention the code list attached what was the uh that detail assessment short name so all these things uh, you might have to explain and these variables names they are as per your uh, c disk guidelines or the sdtm guidelines right so this is what is a small explanation of how the sdtm uh, specs look like i will again uh, take this 
detailed uh, description of uh, how to create the HTM specs for some of the domains. I'll take one or two examples and then we'll see how it goes. So uh, thank you guys for watching. So hi, uh, this I'm going to explain about the Adam specs. So you can see what all the column variables that we have, the data set name, common variable, then order, in which order you would like to present the variable names. This is the order of the variable names that I would like to keep. Then their labels, whether they are required, permitted or permissible or expected kind of or conditional kind of um, options uh, that we see. Then the variable types, whether it's text, integer, float, date, time or date. Then displaying their respective formats. Then their respective code list or control terminology. And whether the original of this variable is predecessor or it's been derived so here region one is my derived variable that is the origin flag is derived predecessor is nothing but something you are just copying it from the earlier um, uh, sdtm kind of data set so this uh, variable study id is a predecessor original flag from my sdtm data set which is my df right and derived is nothing but i'm deriving this region so comment here you can specify or you can write the formula as to how you would like to assign the region or the country wise so this is how your adam specifications uh, format that it will look like and i'll take this in detail in more step by step uh, so that i can explain uh, particular Adam domain uh, in a very detailed manner but this is how the actual Adam specs uh, format that it will look like and more or less it's the format is same in most of the organizations it could be uh, some differences here and there but the logic concept and the uh, standard variable names um, attached to that uh, excel sheet format is almost similar so i'll take this in more detail in upcoming videos thank you yeah hi everyone uh, today we'll see uh, what is uh, clinical trial study flowchart so i hope you guys must have seen um, my uh, earlier videos like what protocol is what clinical study report is what statistical analysis plan is what uh, mock shells are and uh, the other various uh, videos so if you have seen those videos uh, uh, that would help you in understanding uh, this video in a much better way because this video is about what is the process flowchart for a clinical trial study in a pharma industry, right? So let's go one by one and understand each and every milestone. Okay, so when I come back to this uh, clinical trial, so Clinical trial is nothing but a trial where uh, the experiments are conducted on human beings in a much official, ethical and uh, eligible kind of a process in the pharma industry, right? I think in a couple of days, I will be again uploading a video about what clinical trial is and uh, what are the different types of clinical trials. So that video will help you understand in much detail as to what a clinical trial is. So clinical trial in a very short description is nothing but an experiment done on human beings in a much 
ethical uh in 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 a much agreement in a much um, complying to all the guidelines uh, ICH and all those guidelines as per the regulatory bodies they have maintained at each and every country specific area correct now any study uh, or any experiment that happens on uh, human beings it has to go through this process right it can be either in any phase of uh, the study it has to eventually go through this phase now this is very generalized um, kind of a flow chart which i have prepared and i have tried to accumulate everything in one slide so that it becomes uh, very easy for um, viewer to understand uh, what are the milestones that a clinical trial study goes through now the very first step is nothing but my protocol right so this protocol is nothing but um, uh, a a particular process or a document where you need to have in place before initiating a clinical trial without this protocol no one can initiate a clinical trial in the industry clear now i have mentioned uh, another video as to a protocol uh, in a clinical trial as to what is a protocol so you can go through that video in much detail that will help you understand what protocol is so protocol is nothing but my document through which you will have everything in place uh, uh, de detailing about the clinical trial study all the minute details are present in that document uh, in coordination with the ethics committee in coordination with the regulatory bodies in coordination with the sponsors in coordination with your CROs and that's how this uh, protocol is prepared uh, including in collaboration with all the departments and all the stakeholders that are involved in initiating or conducting this clinical trial clear now once this protocol is finalized or it has reached to the first uh, draft version or the final version that's saying that okay this protocol has been reviewed by ethics committee it has been reviewed by sponsor it has been reviewed by all the stakeholders in place then they will start a clinical trial now after the clinical trial has initiated it goes to different process flow in terms of recruiting uh, recruiting uh, patients or recruiting human uh, human uh, uh, human beings uh, specific to that category the population that they are seeking for to uh, 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 to make experiments for the uh, for the medicines that are under the research and development clear so that process flow is different where the screening happens recruitment happens and they are eligible and then they go to the study process so we are not going to talk about that much in detail but once uh, that has been started the next step would be crf design so crf design is nothing but my case report form okay so case report form is nothing but my design of the collecting the data right now one example i would like to give you is if i want to capture the demographics of a human being of a patient or a subject so if i want to uh, capture the demographics of a subject in a clinical trial i will i will design that what is the what is the age or what is the date of birth or what is my date of uh, informed consent whether the subject has given his own consent for being a participant in this clinical trial then all those then the date of screening then uh, what is my age what is my uh, uh, what is my uh, race what is my place of birth or my country specific uh, age so all these demographics data they will uh, they will design in a form right like say for example you will be having a blank form where they will ask you certain questions and you have to fill the 
data whether yes no or you have to put some numbers or you have to write some sentence or you have to tick mark certain uh, categories so that is my design of my case crf form right so now this case report form once it is designed it's been given to uh, the medical monitoring team to capture the data while the clinical study has started and once that data has been started collecting uh, subject by subject uh, this is the place of area where where your crf case report form the blank copies blank copies there is no data captured so those forms are distributed to medical monitoring or pharmacist where they sit with those subjects in the clinical trial and then they will be entering that data manually clear now once that data has been manually uh, captured in that case report form it goes to your database design section for database entry now once i have the design of the case report form the data management team they will design the database either in microsoft access or in oracle or some other platform where uh, they have specific software in a organization so that data management team they will design a database where the front end will be a user friendly for the data entry to enter the data in the system as the data is collected or captured in case report form right now once that is done the data is already entered in the back end system it could be either oracle or it could be microsoft access or it could be other any other platform clear now once this process is ongoing for subject 1 for subject 2 then for the uh, 100 subject or 200 subject depends on what type of uh, the phase of a clinical trial is that depends here the number of subjects if it is in phase 1 ideally it would be 12 to 24 subjects if it's in phase 2 then it would be some number between 200 to 250 if it's in phase 3 it will be more than 300 and if it's in phase 4 it will be the largest um, population because it has been opened for the post marketing survey and the analysis right so that section of data entry is already being started by the data entry people by the system what the database has been designed now once that data has been captured like say for example for doing statistical analysis on any database you need minimum two subjects data if i want to calculate mean or a standard deviation i need minimum two patients data or two subjects data in the system so front end would be the user friend user friendly interface where the data entry person uh, what they will do is uh, they will see a particular system where uh, where where they will they will have a text box and they have to fill in the information as captured in the case report form after that uh, the back end team uh, the back end uh, will capture the data in a specific rows and columns right now once that row and columns data is collected um, data set wise uh, it, it goes uh, to the bio statistician and the sas programmer for doing the analysis so all these things happens here now in the same time once the protocol is uh, uh, completed your crf the design is completed your database Uh, design has initiated and it is still under the production uh, process where you have minimum two subjects data you can always start preparing your statistical analysis plan clear now you can start preparing your statistical analysis plan the moment your protocol is finalized right so now for preparing sap also you will need uh, the blank crf 
you will need the structure of the database design as to how the data is being going to be captured so that the statisticians and programmers they will come to know as to how i am going to receive the data so based on the in all these information the statistical analysis plan will be prepared you can go through uh, my video where i have mentioned uh, what is a statistical analysis plan so uh, i will not go much more in detail in this video but this is the stage where the sap is initiated uh, by a biostatistician in in writing and drafting the contents in coordination with the medical team in coordination with the principal investigator in coordination with all the other stakeholders whosoever are involved in the clinical trial study based on the business business requirements clear now after that uh, the mock shells preparation comes now mock shells uh, can be initiated in parallel with sap or after uh, creating or after completing the first draft version of sap depends on how the power statistician would like to go about i would rather feel like it's better to Uh, to prepare sap and mock shells in parallel so that there are no uh, flaws between them there are no issues or there are no mismatches and everything is in sync clear so i also have a certain two videos for mock shells uh, tlfs and one is for mock shells flow chart so you can go through that video for more detail now next comes my data now by the time the bio statistician and the sas programmer uh, reviews the sap and mock shells and the bio statistician prepares the sap and mock shells and once they have once they have reached to the final version first final version uh, where all the stakeholders they have given their all their comments and it has been finalized after that it goes to the uh, set by that time you will get the data like say around you may get around uh, 90 to 95% data is almost ready in the database design right because since you were busy in preparing in sap and mock shells the data management team was busy in uh, uh, in organizing that data in their system and the data entry team were busy in entertain in entering the data as captured in the case report form right now once that data has been captured in the in the system uh, either bio statistician can request to the data management team to uh, to convert that data into sas or into xpt files so that it becomes easier for a programmer uh, to to review the data to find out the issue so here comes the role of a programmer where that programmer he will he will find out like are there any issues with the data are there any data issues or are there any queries involved or are there any are there any uh, are there any mismatches in the in in the collection of data or is there any field missing uh, in the database system but it is present in the case report form but it is not designed in the database software so all these kind of issues happens and this is the time where your bio statistician and programmer they can they can study the data or they can study the live data and they can uh, raise those queries in resolving the issues or um, uh, whatever data issues or findings or mismatches that they found so that is the time now after that uh, like say for example you have uh, done almost all the data corrections and data issues that has been done then you can start doing your sas programming based on your mock shells now the mock shells first draft version is almost ready so now once the first draft version of mock shells is ready you can start uh, developing your sas programs or you can start writing your sas programs based on the mock shells that has been prepared for developing first your derived data sets if it's a non cdx study if it's a cd study you can start uh, writing programs for generating sdtm data sets or generating adam data sets and then uh, those kind of things will happen at this stage right so you will start uh, 
uh, working at the production level and your you will have one more person at the validation side like whatever you have produced there will always be another statistical programmer who will validate your work right so this all process happens here and once everything is in sync then those sdtm and adam data sets they go into your pinnacle software and here you will see some there are issues with the uh, uh, sdtm adam data sets if it's a non cd study then derived data sets will be reviewed by another programmer just to ensure that are there any issues uh, in the arrangement of data or anything is missing so that happens at the validation side of the non cd uh, uh, study where you will have tlfs and after tlfs you will have your case report form but like say for example if i have a cd study then whatever data sets that you have prepared the sdt or madam uh, you will you will go through in your pinnacle or uh, 21 here is a process there you will you will generate order sdta madam and tlfs and everything and then you will follow it in your pinnacle 21 now once it has entered in the pinnacle 21 it will give you certain logs it will give you errors it will give you warnings it will give you issues uh, in the excel format and uh, those issues warnings that you need to sit and discuss with multiple stakeholders especially sponsor or within the team to resolve the issue or make some changes in your sdtm specs or in adam specs or you might have to go back to your programs you might have to go back to your programs and make changes in your um, in your SDTM or Adam programs and fix those issues then again you have to go back to Pinnacle uh, 21 you upload those revised SDTM data data sets and and check whether whether you have uh, issues and warnings are gone now once all the issues warnings and everything has has been fixed and there is nothing uh, that you can do about it these are my final SDTM data sets then after final sgtm data sets you can generate your final adam data sets now once the final adam data sets are generated your final tlfs are generated now all these three things you you will be doing here it's the production and the validation now after this after it goes to the pinnacle 21 these are my final sgtm uh, data sets these are my final adam data sets these are my final table listings and figures based on these Adam data sets right now the TLFs will also go under the production and the validation uh, process by two SAS programmers or uh, statistical programmers it would be an independent uh, kind of uh, system where production and validation person they both will be uh, writing their own programs independently depends on what the environment is in uh, in the organization in some in some companies they just have a manual checkup in some companies they have double programming or in some companies they have that you just check the numbers that's if, if the numbers look right that's fine now this is the place where your table listings and figures they go to rigorous validation and ensure that each and every uh, table is correct uh, no matter even if you have 200 or 300 TLS all the numbers should match uh, within and across the table listings and figures clear I mean within and across the tables all the numbers should be in sync right now once you have SDTM XPT files, you have Adam XPT files, you have TLF PDF files and everything, and then you can generate the Defend.xml. Now, Defend.xml is a particular format or it's a specific um, submission uh, kind of a system that you have to deliver to the regulatory bodies for your approval, for your study or for approval of your uh investigational product or a medicine clear now this defined xml is something uh, like you know it, it it's an html page mark where 
it have, will have all the information for that clinical trial study. What SGTM data sets were used, what atom data sets were used, what are the TLFs, then what are your control terminologies, then what are the abbreviations that were used. So it will be most probably a hyperlink kind of um, system where you click on one one hyperlink it will lead to lead to you some some other page the relevant page where it's highlights clear so this is the type of submission uh, that we usually give to the uh, uh, to the approval bodies for uh, getting your uh, for getting your approval of your bodies for your study that is a c disk format right now after that is done then you can start preparing my or your clinical study report now i have also made a video for what clinical study report is so you can go through that uh, clinical study report video uh, so i think from this screenshot i have made video for protocol i have made video for statistical analysis plan i have made video for mock shells i have made video for certain sas procedures or for certain sas uh, techniques then i have also made a video for what clinical study report is so you can go through those individual videos that will help you understand this flowchart in a much better way uh, i think in future i will be uploading as to what clinical trial is and what are the different types of phases in a clinical trial so that video will also help you understand this entire flow as to what a clinical trial is in a uh, in a pharma industry right so uh, yeah, maybe after that I will also be uploading certain videos on CDISC and SGTM so let's see how it goes uh, one by one so but this is what is all about uh, a very small uh, flow chart like uh, without this process the clinical trial cannot be initiated or it cannot be completed it has to go through each and every milestone be it protocol crf database design sap mock shells data sas pinnacle 21 sgtm adam tlfs define.xml and csr so this is all the process that a biostatistician and a statistical programmer uh, they they usually go through uh, in a in a clinical in a clinical trial with various milestones uh, that i have highlighted here uh, in the star process which i have already explained so i hope uh, uh, this video might have been helpful and please go through the other individual videos so that will help you uh, in understanding this flow chart in a much detailed and in a much organized way clear So I would like to thank each and every one of you for uh, watching my uh, videos and uh, stay tuned to my channels for more exciting videos. So here um, I would like to emphasize that I have still creating some more uh, other videos and I still have around uh, more in the pipeline and i still have some more of the comments that i have received so let me know if you have further more comments so i can respond them as and when i get time so these comments are helping me in creating new videos for the major audience uh, purposes so thank you so much guys each and one of you for watching my videos thank you